I want to do something very simple in today's video. I'm going to show you the simplest way you can build out a backend for any type of cursor AI app you're currently developing. To do this, we're going to leverage Zapier. It's going to give us access to over 7,000 apps that we can integrate into our cursor AI application. To best showcase this, let me show you something really cool we can do. I'm going to recreate ChatGBT using cursor AI and Zapier. What do you mean, Corbin? I mean, just, just keep watching. Trust me. Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video is sponsored by Zapier. They're like, hey, that other video we did together showing how to use Zapier and Cursor AI did pretty well. Let's do another one. I'm like, okay, another one. Let's do it. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, earlier this week, we used Cursor AI to create a form like this using this code right here. And then we stored the relevant data into a Zapier table using a Zapier webhook. In that video, I showed you how to leverage Zapier webhooks to send data outside of Cursor AI, which also leads to the idea that we can integrate this with any type of app that Zapier integrates with. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that video in the description down below. I'm gonna tag it right there. Watch that video. If you wanna know how to set up a React-based app, and get to the point that you're about to see right now, which is all this code set up. We have a fully functional web application that can send data to a backend. This video though, is we're gonna take the same web app here. We're gonna make it into ChatGPT. Therefore, you run into any issues when it comes to setting up your React-based application or getting to this point in Cursor AI, don't worry. There's a whole video down there down below. It has Google Docs. It has specific chats that are meant to help you with this process. Today though, I wanna show you a very specific way we can really leverage this tech. Pretty cool stuff here. So we're gonna break this down into three simple steps here. First step, let's create a new front end that's gonna be a chat GBT type of UI, an input box, a submission, and an output. Second step here is we're gonna create around two different Zapier automations that's gonna allow us to interact with this web application. And then the third step is gonna be creating a Zapier table that's gonna store the data of conversations that have incurred in this type of web application. That didn't make a lot of sense, don't worry, I'm here to guide you. I'm wearing the Colorado Aspen sweater here as it's getting a little chilly, but we're gonna be good as we keep going down this route, let's jump in. First things first, let's go ahead and create a front end. And as we know of Cursor AI, we can go ahead and Command A or just hit Command L or Control L depending on whether your Windows or Mac and we're gonna get a nice little chat here. So I can see the code here reflected into our user interface here, which is a localhost 3000, a development environment. Let's go ahead and run a simple command. I'm gonna shrink down. We're gonna click this and then we're gonna come up to our terminal. Once we're in terminal here, all we need to do is hit NPM start. This is gonna run the code that we see in this app.js into a live environment. Pretty good so far. From here, let's go ahead and just minimize this. We'll come back to terminal. We'll need to use terminal pretty soon here. We're gonna go back to our app.js. Now that we have the chat open here, let's go ahead and change everything. Let's also make sure we add the .css file as that's the way styling looks on our application. Here's what we're gonna say. Okay, let's change how this looks in a front end for app.js and CSS. Make sure we have both files selected here. Make it so it has a ChatGPT style UI where we can see an input box, ask a question to submit a button. In addition, we have another box that's for the output, e.g. the answers that are being said. And the button says the answer, like e.g. let's get an answer for the inquiry. And then I just took it one step further as let's make it a little bit fun here, like a genie in the bottle. And we're gonna say, let's actually make this like a fate teller in the sense that of questions like, what does the future hold for me, et cetera. The style app therefore should be funny name other than chat GBT. We're gonna hit enter here and we're gonna keep messing around so we get a good output we like, hit enter. Right now, this is gonna be connected to no backend due to the fact that we haven't set up our Zapier automations and our Zapier table, but we're just trying to get a UI here that looks good and then we like. So I'm gonna hit apply here to our app.js, hit save. And then let's see what our CSS looks like. We're gonna hit apply as well. Let's see what we have so far. It's actually not that bad at all. Okay, we ask our questions here. Cool. Oh, I see what they did here. Mystic AI Oracle, okay. Consult with the Oracle. I like it. I like it. I like it. For the input, I'm going to do 90%, so it's not completely off here. There we go. We'll do 95, actually. Nice. Looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and actually connect this now. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, so it's not so zoomed in. Let's go to app.js here, and we need to connect some dots here. It looks like Cursor AI took the initiative and assumed that Zapier webhook URL right there is the one we're going to use in this application. That's actually not the correct one, but don't worry. What we're gonna do here is let's go ahead and set up our two Zapier automations to make this all work. Come on over to Zapier here. Let's do it. Come up here to create new Zap. And if you're like, w what is all this right here? We've been doing a ton of Zapier. I have like over 150 videos on Zapier. So if you ever have like a Zapier itch, check me out here. New Zap. Let's come down here to trigger. And we love these because these allow us to connect data throughout different applications. We're gonna do a webhook by Zapier. So our first webhook here, the purpose of this webhook is gonna be like talking to the Oracle. And we're gonna be like, send prompt message to Oracle. Anytime I think of Oracle, I think of like Aladdin, that really, really classic Disney movie and the genie there. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and do catch hook with the Zapier webhook now. This is where the data can be sent to. So the next step here is gonna be setting up the chat GBT block to internalize the data and give us a nice looking output. 
So let's first off send over some dummy data. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to replace the current Zapier webhook with this one. Nice. As you'll notice is that it already knows the correct method here, which is post. I'll get out of the way, y'all. My bad. It, it knows essentially what we're receiving here. And what it's doing for now is it's giving pseudo answers, such as the stars align in your favor, great fortunes await, et cetera. We're obviously going to replace those with real type of outputs here. But first off, let's send some dummy data. And to do that, we're going to go to our React application here. And then let's just confirm if it works. It might not work. You know how AI is. We're going to say, what does the future hold for me? Console of Oracle. And then obviously these are our, one of our pre-filled fixed text ones. This isn't the real thing. Please try again later. So there was a little bit of an error, <laughs> but don't worry. We're just using this as dummy data. So it looks like with the received payload here, we got an empty query string. Let's first off just change the naming of how the data comes in. So instead of query string, I went ahead and just simply put, when I hit handle submit, we get an empty query string. I want to see that we get this in the payload, which is my example data. What does the future hold for me? And then let's just change the payload name. I accidentally just messed up there. But the point is, is that from that output, I got the answer of user questions form data question. Therefore, when we see this next payload here, we're going to get user question. In addition, the error we ran into was an error we ran into in our previous tutorial, which has to do with course policy. What course policy is, is like a little security thing that happens in our browser. Don't worry, this doesn't happen in production. This only happens in local environments. To circumnavigate around this, we're going to go ahead and click our little plugin from the first episode. If you don't know what this plugin is, simply go to the Google Chrome store, type in cores. It's that little bug right there. Click that. Once it's enabled here, we come back to our React application and we shouldn't get this error anymore and we should actually see some data. Console of Oracle. There we go. Coming back over here, we're going to say find new record, modify B. There we go. So now we have the user's input from our React-based front-end built-in cursor AI. Let's go ahead and analyze it with ChatGPT. With the ChatGPT block selected here, we're gonna do an action event of conversation. And as you could probably already assume, what is happening here can happen with any type of app. E.g. that data that we received in that webhook there, I could send as a Slack message if you wanted to. From here though, let's create a prompt to internalize these messages coming in and give Oracle-like outputs. Here's what I got. Context, you're an Oracle, give an answer, to the person's question. Corbin, you have a answer, I know. All right, grammar wasn't my strong suit. Person's question, what does the future hold for me? So we're gonna put the data that we received from our webhook into semicolon parentheses there as we're identifying that the person's questions is the person's question, if that makes sense. Format, be sarcastic, max it three sentences and go in depth. Memory key for consistent outputs so that we, if we like the output we see, it locks it in. Continue and let's test this step. And here we go, oh, the future. It's like a delightful mystery box filled with, well, more mystery lined with the certainty of paying taxes and the excitement of never ending emails. So far, the Oracle is pretty on point here. Uh, let's continue with this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to our database, which can be found in Zapier tables. Therefore, we need to create a Zapier table that will function as our database for our web application. Went over to Zapier tables, we're gonna create, we're gonna do blank table. And this is huge, let me zoom out. The table here, we're gonna do cursor database. And what is cool and what you're learning here is that we can use Zapier like our backend. And it's a very UI friendly backend that allows us to store data in any context. So we're gonna say create table. Now, typically when people hear the word database and backend, it's like, whoa, this must be some very confusing, complex stuff. But in reality, it really isn't. What a backend is when it comes to a database is simply just where we store certain data in an application. And the way it's typically stored is through paths and referencing it, right? So in this context, we really can have a fully functional database here built on tables by Zapier. For example, our field here could be prompt input or user question. Second column here could be Oracle answer. We can add more fields if we choose to do so, but for now I'm gonna delete this field. We're looking good so far here and we've created a functional database. Now let's leverage it. Coming back to our Zapier automation here, we're gonna create a new step here. That's gonna be for tables. With tables here, we're gonna create a new row based off of this information. So we're going to say create record, continue, table ID. For us, it is the cursor database here. And then we simply put in the information that we care about. So the user question is obviously going to come from that initial webhook here. And we're getting a copilot suggestion. Thank you, copilot. Thank you. There we go. Oracle answer is going to be the chat GBT answer here that we see. So we should see it from the suggestion here. Reply. There we go. Continue. Test this step. And what you'll notice is that automatically we're going to store this to our database here. Boom. It's been stored. Let's go ahead and set up the second half of this tutorial here. We're going to grab this information and reflect it in our web application. So coming back over here, you'll notice that we have the initial part of the tutorial done. E.g. when we handle a submission, we talk to the Oracle, we're going to store the data into our backend. The next part of this tutorial is going to require another Zapier webhook to communicate with this backend and grab data that is relevant to us. So before we code it out with Cursor AI here, let's create a new Zapier automation with the purpose of retrieving the Oracle's answer. So far looking good here. I like it. 
publish. Let's go back up here to create news app and we'll name this one Oracle answer. With that named here, we're going to do a, another Zapier webhook here. So we do webhook. And what's great is that with Zapier webhooks, we can push data, we can get data, and we can delete data. So what that means in this context is now we need to get data here. So we're going to do a catch hook again, continue. We're going to have no information here. So it's going to be a dummy webhook right now. We're gonna grab this webhook here and let's use it in the code we're about to generate. But before we start leveraging this webhook here, we need to actually add a unique identifier to our app here, therefore allowing us to know which record belongs to who. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna add a field here and we're gonna do a field here of just text. The text here being user, create. Now in theory, we could go the extra step here, create a specific UID with authentication and everything about the board there. I've done other videos on this topic, so if you wanna check that out, go ahead. But for now, we're simply gonna provide this user unique identifier through the front end. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and add a little name spot here. This will act as our UID for our platform. Same deal here with the front end. We're gonna say add in the front end, a place to put my name and also add this name variable in the payload. We're gonna hit submit. And with that code added, you'll notice it shows up right here. So we can enter our name and ask a question to the Oracle. Therefore, let's go ahead and change our Zapier, first Zapier automation a little bit to compensate for this. So coming over here to our Zapier automation that's currently on, we're gonna click it. Let's go ahead and say edit Zap. With the edit Zapier, let's get a new data point record here. We're coming to our React app, we'll put in brown, and let's say, what does the future hold? Consult with Oracle. So far, so good. We should see a new record come in here. Find new record, record C. There we go. Username, Brown, and user question. So far, so good. Now, what we wanna do is that the ChatGPT conversation stays the same, or alternatively, we could have the name actually be said in the output as well, if we chose to do so. Adding that to the prompt here, we do person's name, semicolon parentheses, add the name here. From here then, in the actual Zapier record table, let's actually test this real quick as well, retest that. We should see Brown. Oh, Brown. Prepare for a whirlwind future that's predictable as a cat's mood. Fair enough. Is it an orange cat? Those are. Those, those can go in some crazy moods. Zapier tables here, configure. And then you'll notice that we have this new little data point here we can add from our Zapier webhooks, so which is a catch hook. I'm the username Brown. So far, so good. Test this record, retest that. Once we've retested the step here, let's go to the table. And here we go. We got the user Brown question and the answer from ChatGPT. Looking good. Let's hit publish. With this published, let's go back to our other zap, which is the Oracle answer. So we have our dummy webhook set up here that we haven't put in our code yet, but we need to know how our data is formatted so we know how to grab it from our code. Therefore, we're gonna go to tables again. And in tables, we're gonna do an action event of find record. Table ID is gonna be cursor database. And for our lookup field, we'll do user and we'll just put brown. Continue, test this step, and we're good to go. So that is how the data is formatted and structured. Therefore, let's go ahead and grab it from the front end. To do this, we're gonna come back to cursor AI here. We're gonna command L, control L, talk to for app.js. We're gonna go ahead and say this. We wanna add a 10 second delay after we send the post request, which is the first Zapier automation, which we're then leading into our second Zapier automation, which is the get request. We're gonna get the data from the Zapier table here, we'll provide the Zapier webhook URL, and then say from there, display the relevant Oracle answer. I'm gonna hit enter here and proceed. From that cursor AI output here, we got our original Zapier webhook sending. And then in addition to this, we're gonna add a, not a 10 second delay, I wanted to increase this to 20 seconds just to give some latency between the ChatGPT AI analyzing the question and giving an output. And then from there, we're gonna get a response from this Zapier fetch, which is a Git request. Once we get that, we're gonna parse the data for Oracle answer and show it on the front end. So coming back to our second Zapier automation here, I went ahead and added a final webhook here that's gonna send the data back as a response message here. Obviously, we got our first Zapier webhook, then we got our ability to grab the underlying data that we have identified here. And then the final Zapier webhook is going to be a custom request, which we're then going to configure and send as a post to the original URL. And then from here, we're going to send the data that we care about, hit no on the unflatten and proceed. Once this is on, which it is right now, we can go to test this live and see it work. And here we go. Coming over to our cursor app here with a Zapier backend. We're going to simply put in the two things it's requesting. I'm going to simply put in my name and then say, what does my future hold? What does it hold, Mystic AI? What does it hold? Consult with Oracle. There's going to be that 20 second delay of latency so we can find the data relevant to this question. And then we should see it show up right here. And here we go. From our sarcastic Oracle, Dear Brown, the future is a magical place where you'll finally use the gym membership you've been dutifully paying for. It's a realm where every brilliant idea strikes just as you're about to fall asleep. And when you're awake, they vanish faster than your socks in a dryer. From that response, we have it set up here in our Zapier table. I encourage you to check out that other video, which shows you how to integrate Cursor AI and Zapier with all 7,000 apps. I'll leave it at the end here as well, but if you feel like you learned something in today's video, make sure you leave a like. It's completely free, and I'll see you in the next video. Mystic AI. Mystic AI. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.